Welcome to Beware the Scare. My name is Tyler Style, and today we're going to be looking at Saw 6. Saw 6 was directed by Kevin Grutert, and this is the first Saw movie he directed. And it probably should have been his last, as Saw 7 isn't good. This movie was actually the lowest grossing Saw film, and it's probably because it was competing with a little known film called Paranormal Activity. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing if you like horror content. Now that we got the intro all the way done, let's get to the movie. We start the movie with Simone and Eddie who are in their very own trap. Simone is played by Tandra Howard who won the role for winning VH1's reality show Scream Queens. Eddie and Simone are loan sharks and they feast on people's financial limitations. Only one of them will live and whoever puts the most amount of flesh onto a scale will survive. But it looks like Eddie has the advantage. Who says McDonald's is bad for you? Eddie gives up his first piece of flesh and Simone starts sawing off her arm. Eddie gives his second piece of flesh and is in a pretty good lead. Simone decides to take a meat cleaver and chops off her arm. She grabs her arm and I want to make a give her a hand joke, but it seems a little distasteful. She starts drunk walking her way to the scale and could somebody give her a hand? She drops her arm in and this is enough weight to beat Eddie's big boy belly and she lives. Good job Simone! Get it? I'm giving her a hand. I was right, that was distasteful. We start off where we left off in Saw 5 and Hoffman is getting out of the box. He opens the walls back up and god damn Strom got fucked up. We go to an insurance office where we meet the boss, William. And William isn't a nice guy. We go to a flashback where William terminated Harold's coverage because Harold has a heart disease and when applying for coverage he forgot to mention the cyst removal from his jaw 30 years ago and that's why they're not covering him anymore. You just give me a death sentence. Or they just want to save a pretty penny. Found two application errors for a chronic Leo client. This guy practically lives at his doctor's office. I mean, this could probably save us nearly 200k over his lifetime. I'll go with the latter. Hoffman gets called to a crime scene for the first trap, and they found fingerprints, but not Hoffman's. Instead, it's Agent Strom's. Erickson and Hoffman walk into another room where Agent Perez is. She says that her and Strom investigated the case of the five people in the last game in Saw 5, so obviously he knew who those people were. They say that he has to be found because they don't know he's dead yet. They want Hoffman to partner up with them and give him a pretty sweet deal. We're offering full disclosure, detective. From now on, everything we know, you know. Hoffman is at the hospital and gets confronted by Pamela Jenkins, who's a reporter diving into the Jigsaw case. Hoffman doesn't give her any information and leaves to visit Simone. And he pisses Simone off when he asks if she learned her lesson. Look at my goddamn arm! What the fuck am I supposed to learn from this, huh? Jill Tuck is watching a home movie that John took when she was in the hospital pregnant with Gideon. We finally get to see what's inside the box that she was given from John's will back in Saw 5. It contains six numbered envelopes and one of them is the reporter who confronted Hoffman at the hospital. Speaking about Hoffman, he's with a coroner and they notice that the puzzle piece cut out of Eddie was made with a different knife than usual and the only other time a knife like this was used was in Seth Baxter's death, the man who killed Hoffman's sister. They are looking into Seth Baxter's tape and going to see if they can figure out the actual voice of the person who made the recording. So Hoffman is shitting bricks right now. Jill Tuck goes to her medical clinic and gets confronted by Hoffman. Hoffman gets the envelopes from Jill and it's the contestants for the next game. We go back to William who is working late at night in his office. The power goes out and William sees the outline of someone with a gun. William pulls out his own gun and confronts him. When the man turns around, William shoots him, but it turns out it's just the security guard. When trying to help him, William gets kidnapped by Mr. Peggy. William is in a trap of his own and the TV turns on. What the fuck? That's not Billy, but instead it's John motherfucking Kramer. He says that William's company hurts the people who actually need help in order to save money. And because of that, he's going to have four tests. And if he doesn't complete his tests within 60 minutes, then one limb will be blown off per test he doesn't complete. Plus, he will never see his family again. We go to Tara and her son Brett, who are in a room. They see a monitor that is showing William's game and William's first test starts. He has to compete with Hank, who is the janitor for the company. Hank is a constant smoker and they have to hold their breaths. If one of them starts breathing, then the machine will close in on their ribs. The only way to win is with the other person's failure. The game begins and they start holding their breaths. Hank is the first one to breathe and it closes a little. William breathes too and then breathes a second time so he starts getting crushed. Hank breathes in again and he gets crushed a little more, making him pee himself. Ew. The pain makes Harold keep breathing and it leads to his demise. 
William gets out but notices a gnarly cut he has on his side. He gets a key and unlocks the first explosive device on his wrist. We go back to Tara and Brett and they see a lever that says live or die. It's connected to a bunch of hydrofluoric acid. We go back to Pamela Jenkins and she visits Jill Tuck. She tries to give Jill a piece of paper that was at the location where John died and Jill doesn't want it but Pamela leaves it for her anyway. Pamela leaves and gets attacked by Mr. Piggy. Now she's in her own room across from Tara and Brent. We go to a flashback with William and John, and William is telling John about the algorithm he created to decide whether or not they will cover someone. In essence, it breaks down to monthly payments multiplied by lifespan minus the probability of illness, and if the sum is positive, we consider coverage. So in a sense, you choose who lives or dies. William gets to his next test where he is told to take two handles. When he grabs them, he gets jump scared by a flying Billy. Billy talks and I always thought that someone would need to pull a string or have their hand up his ass in order for him to talk, but I guess not. This test will have William choose whether to save Addy or Alan. Alan is a younger, healthier human, but he has no family and no one that would miss him. Whereas Addy is older and has a family history of diabetes. but. She has a loving family and children. So, according to William's algorithm, he should choose Alan because he is healthier and younger, but now, he's realizing that the choice isn't so cut and dry. Billy floats away like the majestic angel he is, and the game begins. The handles pull tighter and tighter as William decides who he should save. After it gets too hard to hold on to, he chooses to save Addy. Alan drops from the platform and gets hung, but not before getting smacked in the face. Alan floats away like Billy and William gets his second key. Hoffman gets a call from Erickson and he says that they found the Seth Baxter tape and wants to talk to him about something in person. We go to Jill who is holding a package and brings it to a door. We go to a flashback where Hoffman is helping set up Timothy Young's game back in Saw 3 and John and Amanda come in. Hoffman drops Timothy's ass like a ragdoll and John isn't a fan of that. That's a human being. After John and Amanda leave the room, they are confronted by Jill. Jill tells John that she wishes he would stop and John hands her a key. This key is the one she used to open the box. Inside of the box were the envelopes, but also a package. The one she's holding right now. She drops it into the door and we go back to William. He's walking down a steamy room and remembers when John brought his attention to a treatment that might cure his cancer. He says that there's a 30 to 40% success rate, but William denies him because it's not what his doctor recommended. William gets into an even steamier room and this is his third test with Debbie, one of the company's lawyers. Debbie has 90 seconds to get through a maze, but there are some steamy parts that she can't get through. How she can is by William taking the steam for her. The game begins and Debbie is freaking out. She gets to a part with steam and William takes it for her. William finds the ladder and takes the steam one more time for Debbie, but gives up while she is still in the danger zone. She pushes through and gets to the ladder. She gets to William's level and sees pictures that show that William has the key she needs inside of him. With only 20 seconds left, she pulls out an electric saw and tries to kill him to get the key. They get into a fight and BAM right in the kisser. Debbie corners Will and is about to kill him, but he gets saved by the bell. Come on Debbie, that fall was a little dramatic. William gets his third key and we go back to Tara and Brent. Brent wants to pull the lever, but they don't know what it does, so his mom tells him not to. Hoffman is with Erickson and Perez, and they tell him that they are currently analyzing the Seth Baxter tape, and they know that it did not match John's voice, but they are trying to descramble it to figure out whose voice it is. Erickson gets a call, and it's the lab, and they are really close to getting the real voice. They all go to the lab, and we go to Jill, who pulls the sixth envelope out of the box and leaves. William is about to go into his last trap, and this one is one of my favorites. He opens the door and we see the shotgun carousel. Billy gets on the TV and he says that these are the six people who find errors in their clients' applications. And now William has to find their own errors. Six are on the carousel, but only two can get off. A shotgun will fire six rounds, but William can suffer two puncture wounds in order to save two of them. The trap starts and everyone's pleading their case. The first person gets chosen and it's Aaron. He tells William to follow their policy, but William doesn't and Aaron gets shot. The second person up is Emily, and she pleads that she has two kids and William decides that she should live. The shotgun shoots off into the air and Emily lives. With everyone realizing there's only one spot left, they all start begging, possibly even lying. The third person is Gina, the girl who says she's pregnant, but William doesn't save her. 
Dave is the fourth person and even though he says he's the best person in the whole group, William doesn't save him. The fifth person is Shelby and William decides to save her. With Josh knowing his fate, he tells William to watch him die. And I love this scene. Look at me! When you're killing me, you look at me! William gets his final key and we go back to the lab with the detectives. As they're about to listen to the real voice, Hoffman doesn't really want to be near everyone else. Prez says she doesn't understand Strom's motivation, and Hoffman grabs a cup of Joe. Erickson seems to confront Hoffman by telling him that they figured out that Strom's fingerprints were inconsistent, and basically, he wasn't alive when his fingerprints touched the crime scene. As they find the actual voice on the tape, everyone hears Hoffman's voice and Hoffman goes full John Wick. He stabs Erickson in the neck and Perez gets Cup of Jode. He uses a screwdriver to take out the electricity and then uses Sachi as a shield from Perez's bullets. Hoffman starts stabbing Perez and kills her. He pulls out Strom's hand from a cooler inside of his trunk and we go to a flashback to where he used pliers to rip his hands from the bars. Then he placed the fingerprints in the crime scene. He goes back into the lab and places Strom's fingerprints in it and burns the lab down. Joe gets to Hoffman's game and places the piece of paper that Pamela gave her onto the keyboard. Brad and Tara decide that they have to pull the lever because the time is almost out, but when they pull it, nothing happens. Hoffman gets back to the game and finds the note Jill left him. It's the note that Amanda read in Saw 3, but we never really knew what it said until three movies later. Jesus Christ, Saw! It says that Hoffman knows that Amanda was with Cecil the night he broke into the clinic and killed Gideon. Hoffman says that Amanda must kill Lynn, the doctor helping John, or else he will tell John what she did. As this happens, Joe comes into the room with Hoffman and electrifies him with the chair he's sitting in. William gets into the final room with one second left and he is in between Brett's and Tara's room and Pamela's room. He runs to Pamela and turns out Pamela is his sister, but Brent and Tara are not happy to see him. This entire game we were led to believe that Brent and Tara were his wife and kid, but their actual husband and dad was Harold. The man we saw talking to William at the beginning of the movie. Harold ended up dying and now Brent and Tara have the option to let William live or die. Joe restrains Hoffman to the chair and we see the last item in the box. It's the reverse bear trap that we saw back in the first Saw movie, but we never got to see the end result. She puts the trap onto his head and we go back to the game. Tara wants to kill William but doesn't have the strength to pull the lever, but Brent can't. No, Brent! You kill my father, you motherfucker! Some spikes drop into William's back and starts pushing the hydrofluoric acid into him. While this happens, Hoffman's timer gets started and Joe says the famous words. Game over. William's body starts to disintegrate and Hoffman is trying to get out of the chair. Will's body completely falls off and Hoffman gets out of the chair. Are you guys ready to see the reverse bear trap in action? Okay, three, two, one, psych! Hoffman uses the bars on the doors to stop the trap and get out. We end the movie with Hoffman screaming with his face all sorts of fucked up. We go to the credits, and I typically stop at the end of the movie like I should, but this is the first Saw film with a post credit scene. Amanda goes to the room that Corbett is locked in, and tells her not to trust the one who saves her. I've seen this movie probably five times, and I didn't know anything about this post credit scene until doing research for this video. Saw 6 came out in 2009, and this is the second to last Saw movie that follows this specific storyline. I really enjoyed this movie because it seems like the main game actually made sense. Really trying to show William where his flaws are, rather than in like Saw 4 where Riggs goal was to not get there in time. If you haven't seen Saw 6, go watch it. I try to keep these videos as short as possible, so there's some things you missed, but you get the gist. My name is Tyler Style, and this has been Beware the Scare. Thank you for watching my video on Saw 6. What was your favorite trap in the entire movie? Mine was the shotgun carousel. Let me know yours in the comments below. Only a couple more weeks of Saw movies, then we're gonna go with some one-offs. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys later.